Hey everybody, it's Nicholas Rogers with the Big Timber Lodge coming to you with another episode of Watch Before You Buy talking about the Dead Air Sierra 5 sound suppressioning device. So if you're like me, you probably purchased one of these a long time ago and you are still waiting for your NFA tax stamp, but you're nervous because dun dun dun, there have been reports, valid reports of these little bad boys blowing up with light use at the range. Now, I have talked to the people at Dead Air and they have acknowledged that this has been happening, but it's been happening a lot less than what people are being led to believe. And Dead Air has a 100% satisfaction warranty and guarantee. And if something does happen to your sound suppression device, you can send it back to them for a free replacement or repair. Now, that is not what you want to hear after you've been waiting for, if you're like me, I waited a year and a day for this to get its tax stamp. So you don't want to think that you're going to have to then send it off to somebody for it to be repaired or replaced when all you want to do is have fun with it, right? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was very nervous when I first got this out of tax stamp jail. And I called that air saying, what can I do about this? And they said, just shoot it. So then I called the manufacturer of the rifle that I am going to be dedicating this can to who suggested that I purchase this exact model because they built my rifle around the idea that it would be shot with this suppressor. And I said, what happens if there's catastrophic failure? Luckily for me, the rifle manufacturer said, well, if something like that happens because we suggested it to you, we will replace anything that breaks. But you can do two things to help ensure that you aren't going to have catastrophic failure. Now, these aren't guaranteed, but it is two things that will probably ensure at least a 90-something percent success rate that this isn't going to explode. And those two things are to take this to a gunsmith, and then they can use a special rod that they put down the middle of this can to ensure that the baffles are aligned properly. It's like an alignment rod. And they can make sure then that there's not going to be any sort of baffle strike as the bullet leaves the end of the barrel and passes through the suppressor, causing some sort of failure that way. And secondly, the rifle manufacturer said, make sure everything is tightened to spec. So I went to a gunsmith and I said, hey, can you do these two things for me? He put the rod down. He says, it looks like the baffles are good. Doesn't look like you're going to get a baffle strike. And then he used a tool, made sure everything that was loose or can be tightened was tightened to spec nothing was loose but he did have to tighten the actual chemo mount to the suppressor can itself but not a lot so then he sent me on my way to the range and i went to the shooting range and i shot this and i got through about 20 rounds and like it says in the shooting or the uh, owner's manual of the suppressor make sure you check it periodically that everything is still staying tight so i was like okay I uh, got through about 20 rounds, checked it, and the chemo mount attaches onto the end of the barrel and it attaches to the suppressor. And when you attach it, you get this clicking noise, right? And when I first put it on the barrel, I got the clicking noise. It wouldn't go any further. And then after about 20 rounds, I got one more click. So I was like, oh, wow, it did loosen up a little bit, but it wasn't much at all. And then I checked it periodically, like after every 20 rounds. And the chemo mount didn't get any more loose and it didn't actually need to be tightened anymore as well. So after about 80 to 100 rounds, I said, okay, looks like I'm not having any sort of issues. Hopefully I got a good can. Let me go ahead and take this off. Well, done, done, done. When it got to that point and I'm using a special oven mitt because this thing gets radioactive hot, stupid, stupid hot. I grab onto this and I go to unscrew it, which you're supposed to hear that noise. And instead of that, I actually just had the suppressor unscrewing itself from the chemo mount that's attached to the end of the barrel. I was like, huh, that's not supposed to happen. So I went ahead and just unscrewed the suppressor from the actual chemo mount and took it off. And then I put it down on like a mat because it was stupid hot. And then I noticed that this end cap was no longer flush with the end of the suppressor, but the end cap, which is technically a flash hider, was sitting slightly above the end of the suppressor. And I said, that's strange. So I went to touch it and sure enough, it was so loose. I just turned it like almost a half turn and it popped off, Plop, came right off. Um, so I was like, good to know. This suppressor will unscrew itself from itself. 
And that is probably another reason why people are getting some sort of catastrophic failure is because they're getting these straight from factory and they're loosening up with the initial use. Because a lot of the failure that we're hearing about is like within the first 100 to 150 rounds, which would make sense because I only shot about 80 to 100 rounds and this end cap almost fell off and the suppressor was unscrewing itself actually from the chemo mount that's attached to the end of the barrel. So after this thing cooled down, I took it home and decided to call Dead Air. And they said, hey, we've heard about this. There's a simple fix. What we want you to do is unscrew the end cap from the end of the suppressor, this flash hiding device, and then also unscrew the suppressor from the uh, chemo adapter that attaches to the end of the barrel. Those are the three main components of this device. Clean the threads very, very well, and then use blue Loctite. Blue Loctite. So pay attention to what I'm saying. Blue Loctite is Loctite 242. Okay? This is the one that they said to use. This is coming straight from Dead Air. Put a dab of blue Loctite 242 on the threads of the end cap which is the flash hiding device, just a dab. And the same thing with the threads of the suppressor that is attaching to the chemo adapter. After you've cleaned the threads, that's when you wanna put a dab on there. Now, once you've done that, put everything back, screw it down to spec. There is spec for how tight everything should be. That is going to be in your owner's manual. Make sure to read your virtual owner's manual. And then, that should prevent this cap from unscrewing from the body of the suppressor and this body of the suppressor from unscrewing from the actual chemo adapter. So that's it. As long as you have checked your baffles to make sure that they're aligned, get an alignment tool. Your gunsmith probably has one. They can check to make sure that this isn't going to get a baffle strike. And then you use a dab of blue Loctite on the threads. It'll prevent it from unscrewing from itself. And there you go. As far as the quality of this build goes, this feels very high quality. I mean, it does. Now you might be saying, well, it's unscrewing from itself, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, this is supposed to be a modular device where you can actually get different end caps if you would like. So you don't have to necessarily be running a flash hider. You can get a totally different end cap for this. Um, so it needs to be able to come out, right? So it needs to be able to unscrew. And also, this is the chemo mount, and they have a xeno mount, and then they also have a traditional screw-on mount that will work with this body of the suppressor. So if you have other rifles that, let's say, have a thread but don't necessarily have the chemo adapter, you need to be able to take this chemo adapter portion off and then put whatever type of adapter that will work with your other rifles. It's a very modular, well-thought-out system, and it does say, actually, in the owner's manual, use thread locker but it's not really being advertised too much. So I wish when I first would have called that air and I told them I was concerned about this, they would have mentioned, make sure to put some thread locker on this before you shoot it. But because I was checking it periodically and I didn't get too many rounds down range, I didn't have anything catastrophic happen. And I hope you learned something from this video and you don't have anything catastrophic happen. Let me know what you think about this sound suppressioning device. As far as reducing the decibels, it is fantastic. You're still gonna get that supersonic pop of the bullet breaking the sound barrier, but it does greatly reduce the noise from the actual explosion happening inside the chamber and going down the barrel. Additionally, the flash hider does work very well. I've shown videos to some people and they said, wow, that does a really good job. And those are some former military guys that used to bust knuckles, so to speak. All right, so make sure to like the video, leave a comment, share this with people that might be thinking about buying the Sierra 5. It is a fantastic can. Just have to make sure the baffles are aligned and that you attach everything with a light dab of blue 242 Loctite so it doesn't unscrew itself. And also subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good jazz, just to kind of help build up my videos so I can keep bringing content like this to you in the future. This video, I'm not shooting because I'm actually trying to make this a monetized video so YouTube will get this out into the YouTube algorithm so that other people can see this content that might have been experiencing something that I was as well and they can fix it before something really bad happens. All right, so until next time, peace.